tonight we're going to run a masterclass uh, about the uh, uh, brokers and exchanges industry. I presume this is a very interesting industry, especially for us, because we are dealing with that on a daily basis, maybe not daily, but at least quite often, uh, because you trade, and the more you trade, the more your money you make, uh, making for these guys, right? And uh, I presume if you become a shareholder, you kind of uh, start making money for yourself if you become a part of the company. And tonight we're going to look at uh, one specific company, which called CBOE Global Markets. And uh, some of you used to have account with them. It was Chicago Board of Option Exchange, CBOE, and then it was bought by Charles Schwab's. And at the moment it's owned by Charles Schwab's. And it's, includes, it's included by value line in the brokers and exchanges industry. Even though the business is quite different within that industry, if you compare different companies, and we already analyzed one company uh, last year. Uh, it was um, E-Trade. And uh, today's company is different from the operations and from the marketing and from profitability uh, from um, E-Trade. Okay, it's a bit different company. So in any way, so before we start, I'm going to ask uh, everyone to, uh, acknowledge the disclaimer, uh, just to put a plus that you understand that this is a masterclass, it's not an advice. And before you make any decisions, you have to consider your own circumstances. Because remember guys, all the time, if you hear any, anybody's advice, you still have to understand what you're doing uh, because you might have different situation, different circumstances from any other person who is probably deciding to to do investment or not to do investment, okay? So that's a clear understanding. All right, uh, our plan for today, uh, by the way, uh, you can see uh, there are quite a lot of people today. So altogether we have 32 participants right now. And uh, normally this masterclass is reserved uh, for our club members, for investment club members. And uh, we kind of already understand how to analyze the companies. We understand how to analyze them fundamentally, how to analyze them technically. And uh, also it's easier for us to understand a different strategy. So, uh, so if you are new to the market and if today you kind of uh, just decided to come and see uh, how uh, analysis is done. Uh, so, and if you don't understand something, don't be shy, you can post a question and uh, probably I will reserve the question to the end and I will answer them. But if the question is related to the specific topic which I'm explaining, I would probably answer straight away. Okay, and uh, I will try to deliver this information to, on today masterclass in a way that even if you never ever dealt uh, with the stock market, you're still going to understand. Uh, this uh, kind of presentation. And also you will understand how we, people who already work on the stock market, how we choose the companies and how we deal with this kind of creature, right? So first of all, usually what we do, we analyze the current market situation, uh, where we are right now and what we can expect in the nearest future. Usually it's like one month because we run master classes on a monthly basis. So we look uh, a bit ahead. Uh, it's very important to know because the more you know about general economy, general market overview, uh, you can expect uh, movement uh, to whatever direction uh, we can expect, right? After that, we're going to analyze specific company industry and today's industry going to be brokers and exchanges industry. Uh, All together we have, uh, at the moment, uh, value line identifies 101 industry and we are trying to analyze different industry during our master classes. Sometimes we will repeat, but uh, like this time, even though I took exactly the same industry, but the company is going to be different if we compare with the E-Trade, which we analyzed last year from the same industry. And then we have one representative from that particular industry, CBOE Global Markets. The ticker for the trading on US market, it would be CBOE. And we're going to analyze it in details using fundamental analysis and also technical analysis. And then we'll try to predict, kind of discuss what we can expect from that particular movement, from this particular company in the nearest future and how we can make money on it. And then we'll try to develop different trading and investment strategies. And then uh, if you have any questions, you can ask and uh, then we have a couple news. So usually I go there. 
All right, so it's all clear. If you want to say like uh, this from zero to 10, how you understand that, we'll start uh, our market analysis. Now, in order to analyze general market, there are uh, different indexes, we call them. Uh, if you never uh, ever dealt with the market, probably for you, uh, you, you've in any way you saw them Dow Jones Industrial Average. Sometimes you can see that on TV they're telling you that all oh, market went up or oh, market went down. So that's how they analyze it. They look at uh, the major indexes, and there are four of them which we are going to look at them today. And one of them is Dow Jones Industrial Average. The ticker on some platform is DGI, and uh, it includes in itself uh, 30 biggest by capitalization companies in the United States. So if you think about it, it's a composite of uh, different businesses uh, in different industries, which are biggest, all right? And what happens if the stock market is, if the stock prices of those companies are growing, it means the index is going to grow. If the, in general, the prices of those particular companies are going down, so it means this, the index is going to go down. Okay, that's how it works. So, and if you can see that the, if you look not, not at individual company, but the index itself, so you can see that if it is going down, it means that majority of those companies, they're going to down it, in prices uh, right now. So that's how it works. So what we can see uh, on this particular graph, that starting from 2009, uh, the index went up generally. Okay, in some areas we can see it's flat movement, for example, in 2011, also in 2015, 2016, and after the election of Donald Trump, uh, market uh, took that is a very, very good uh, news, positive, like for several years it was growing up, and then 2018, 2019, it was kind of in horizontal trend. Uh, in some cases it's one down, then up, down, up, down and up and uh, in 2009 we had a, again a move up and until the march when pandemic of coronavirus covid 19 started and we can see a huge drop but if you look at the big picture we're still in uptrend right even this huge drop which practically was 37 percent it's uh, come out of this long-term uptrend tested it and uh, moved back in a kind of a slow line and here is a fast line. So we can see that it's at the moment right here. Now, this is the monthly chart. Each candle represents one month. So we can see several years right here. If you zoom it closer and try to see what is happening within the last uh, few months in 2020, we can see that the highest point in Dow Jones index was 29,560. Uh, it means that they, that was the point of highest prices of those companies. Okay, and uh, in 2000, uh, in March, in February, end of February uh, 2020, the speech of uh, Warren Buffett triggered that fall. I, I believe that that's his uh, interview triggered that fall, uh, where he told that. Uh, People don't understand the damage which coronavirus is going, not coronavirus, but the measures against the coronavirus cause. Uh, and after that, the market started falling down. And uh, it's practically fell to 18,200. So it's about 37, I think, percent. And after that bounce back and start growing up again. Now, it is very important to understand that this particular move back happened on a kind of on a positive news which were everywhere and around the world about that coronavirus is practically beaten up and uh, everything is going back to the norm but uh, in my personal understanding this move up doesn't really represent the real situation what happens on the market because still a lot of businesses they suffered a lot of businesses will go down completely and uh, will go into liquidation or bankruptcy. And uh, at the moment, we don't see that picture because the prices of those stocks, they're cl close to the uh, previous uh, highs, which were in uh, just a second, uh, just going back to the previous slide. We can see this height, which were right now 27,000, it was in 2019, in 2017. For us, it's very important. So if we understand that this price of 
uh, several companies included in that index and the, the price of those companies on exactly the same level as it was in 2019, we have to ask the question, do uh, those companies make exactly the same profit as last year or not? Uh, do they make more money maybe or do they make less money? So uh, while I'm talking about uh, different indexes, please think about how you can distinguish it, how you can analyze it and after that you'll put it in the chat. Okay, but that's what we can see in Dow Jones. Uh, we can see that uh, right now we have a couple candles if we based our uh, uh, kind of uh, opinion on the technical analysis, we can see we've done one wave and now we're on the top of second wave. So we kind of go to this level, resistance level, I can say, and we might uh, have it bounce back down here. Now, it is important to understand that right now, uh, last last uh, week, uh, we had already a few banks uh, reported their earnings and at the moment we entered the earnings seasons. And uh, they already re their reports are not that good. And uh, for me, it was very strange that banks reported um, kind of not good quarters and they gave quite bad, uh, like I mean, forward earnings projections, but still the market took it kind of positively and it's moved up. So I presume that people expected worse. And when banks didn't report uh, it as bad as people expected, uh, the prices of, uh, like prices of for stock market in general uh, moved up quite a lot. Okay, like you can see the scandal. Another thing which is also has to be taken into consideration here that banks, uh, even though they reported kind of not as bad as uh, people expected, we have to understand that government supported uh, like businesses, banks and economy in general for the last several months. And uh, they provided a lot of incentives, like financial incentives. If, uh, uh, if we take even Australia, we know that a lot of businesses, they get subsidiaries like uh, from the government and they pay the employees money even if they don't work. So it's like a uh, payment for not doing any job. So how long the government is going to support it? We don't know. And I just talked to a couple of friends. Maybe I don't know, you can confirm it or deny uh, in the sense that I don't, I don't get any support from the government myself. So I don't know uh, how it works, but I spoke to a couple of people and they're saying that maybe another couple of months and after that it's going to be over, right? So I, I don't know if she, somebody is using right now uh, this kind of support, you can put it in chat uh, if you know exact date when it's going to be over, right? Because if this situation happens and the uh, government uh, won't provide any more uh, any support, banks uh, won't get back their money, which we landed for, for example, mortgages, uh, car loans, uh, like any type of loan. So if people don't get any income, so they cannot provide the payments, right? So, and uh, same story with businesses. So if businesses uh, don't have enough clients, don't have enough customers, and they don't provide uh, good income, so they won't be able to repay back their loans, business loans, which they got from the banks as well. So banks will suffer, okay, in the future. So some banks will suffer more, some banks will suffer less. Okay, so I can see that somebody uh, typed here something, Show just a second. Uh, trying to figure out how it works. Okay, chat here. Okay, it was announced that Australia will extend assistance, but uh, with new conditions and show what the US government is doing in as much detail. Okay, JobKeepers has extended till March 2021. All right, okay, it's good to know. So it means that uh, there would be a support provided. So it, the economy won't collapse in September. That, that's a good, good news uh, for us. All right, let's have a look at another index. Uh, the difference between uh, Dow Jones Industrial and uh, SAP 500, this index called uh, it includes 500 businesses. If previous uh, index included 30 companies, this one 50, 500, and some of them big, some of them small, some of them medium, okay? I believe that this index represent economy in a better way than the previous index, for my opinion again, but still, uh, very often they move in exactly the same uh, kind of patterns. So I didn't show this index from 2009, but it looks very, very similar. So, and we can see that exactly the same. So it bounced back quite quickly in the very low point in March, 
2020. And now we can, uh, we approach in the highest points, like the highest point was uh, in February, uh, 2020, so it was 3,383, and uh, at the moment it's 3,250. So it's about 130 points below that highest point. All right, at the moment we are already higher in price than we were in 2019. So if generally I would look at index and I can see that index index prices are higher than in previous years, so I can expect that earnings have to be better. So if people paying more for the same share, it means that this particular share is making more money, right? So the earnings is high. So we have to check if it is the case uh, with companies included in uh, this particular index. Okay, also based on technical analysis, we see a couple here dodges. And uh, I actually expected that it would go as uh, Dow Jones uh, last night, but instead of that, it's, it's actually was uh, below, like it was a negative uh, before the market opened. And when the market opened, but then during the market uh, hours, the price moved up. So actually it's broke through this resistance line. So it's interesting to see what is going to happen today. Uh, because this gap is not closed yet, so uh, it might uh, try to reach that highest point. Although, personally, I don't see any reasons why it should do it, okay? Because at the moment, the earnings reports and uh, quite a lot of them not as good as uh, people expect. Okay, this is standard and poor. Also, if it pulls down, the first uh, support is going to be somewhere here in around 3000. Why? Because previously it was a resistance level, quite strong, so several times it's touched it. For people who are new, you need to understand that a lot of traders, they base their decision on technical analysis and they will use this support in order to allocate their trades. And very often, whatever before was a support, and resistance at the time, it's quite a strong level. So after that, what the, the traders do when it reaches, they start exiting. If they have short position, they're trying to buy. People who are trying to open new position, they also start to buy. Very often at those levels, that's why we can see the slow down and then moves up. For example, this level uh, lasts from uh, three years ago, and you can see that it's felt exactly where it was before the Donald Trump was elected. Okay, I can see that some kind of uh, comment or question was there, so just a second. Now, uh, while I'm opening that uh, in other uh, chat. Okay, so men, I, uh, however, would be cut from 700 to 50. Okay, that's a reduction. Okay, so this is a NASDAQ. Uh, NASDAQ is a bit different from previous to indexes. And the main reason is the companies included in that index. Uh, they include 100 companies, uh, mostly tech stock, technological stock. So as you can see in 2019, even in 2020, uh, the highest point was 9,700. So after it fell down uh, during this kind of uh, uh, recession period in March, February, March of 2020, it's not only bounced back to the same level, but actually it's moved up much higher. And at the moment, it's a practically highest point in history of this index. And the main reason uh, is very simple because IT stock uh, is doing well. Okay, majority of businesses, they started moving uh, online. In order to do that, they have to have uh, certain IT infrastructure. So they are spending for uh, like improving their computer, computers, IT systems, in, uh, in the investing in software, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why IT stocks, they're kind of making uh, good money. Uh, some of them not better than last year, but still they're not suffering as retailers or like for example, airline industry or travel industry, right? So they're much better in this particular case. So guys, again, we have to ask us, uh, ourselves the question. So if here we can see that the highest point in 2019, it was somewhere around 8,500 and at the moment it's 10,900, so it's 11,000. So it's practically 25, percent even more 30 percent increase in prices the question is are those companies making 30 percent more money or not so 
before I proceed, I wanted to ask you, especially guys who already trade and already analyze the companies, how can we distinguish, how can we do that? How we can, for example, tell us if the index is overvalued or undervalued compared to the last year? Okay, guys, can you please put it in the chat, uh, your opinion? How, how do you think we can assess? Uh, for example, NASDAQ is high-end price than last year, S&P 500 and Dow Jones, they are low-end price than last year. And we need to understand, do people pay more now money for those indexes? It's like uh, overvalued or undervalued. So if any ideas. Okay, Andre offers uh, compare value line reports for participating companies. You can do that and then you have to do the quite uh, complicated analysis, combine them all together, right? And uh, then calculate it. That's one way to do. Uh, you can do this way, any other way. And then uh, you would have to also know the proportion, uh, how those companies included in this index. Correct, Gina, correct, Nick. Uh, we are looking at PE ratio. Uh, very good, very good. So I'm going to show you how you can do that. And uh, I'll show you if we overvalued right now or undervalued, right? So it would be interesting for us to see. But let's have a look at another, uh, index, which called volatility index or VIX. And in this particular key, by the way, guys, uh, if I had just put your chat on the top of the presentation, uh, can you see it as well? Is it covering the slides or you can see slides without interruption? Can you, I just wondering because should I keep it? All good, right? Okay, I'm not covering the presentation with this. Uh, I have a bit screen. But uh, it's not covered, but okay, that's good, that's good. All right, so what we can see here, guys, uh, look, this is volatility index, or some people call it uh, index of fear. When the market goes down, people are fearful and this index uh, jumps up. That's what we can see in uh, March, like end of February, March, 2020, when all other indexes, previous indexes, they started falling in price. Majority of uh, companies, they lost in price quite a lot. Some of them went two times, three times down. So for example, if the company was $20, it could go to even $5, like four times. Uh, but in general, if we look at indexes, they went about 30 uh, plus percentage. Okay, 37% as I remember correct. All right, so, but volatility in this just skied up, okay? It was very high, one of the highest points in the whole history. And if we can see that in 2019, 2018, uh, there was time when this volatility index jump up. Usually if you put two charts together, if you put a uh, chart for any other index, S&P 500 or Dow Jones, doesn't really matter. So you can see when the volatility index goes up, uh, for example, Dow Jones will go down. So that's why when we see that index is very high. This is the time when we buy, okay? We prefer to buy when the volatility index is high. So also we buy stocks when the other indexes, Dow Jones and the S&P 500, they're very low because it means that majority of companies, they lost in price and we can buy some bargains. It doesn't mean that we have to buy all the companies because some companies, they fell for reason, fell in price for reason. But some companies, they fell in price just because of emotional uh, situation in the market, okay? This index is, uh, shows us that right now, if we can see this is a support level, which previously was a resistance. In normal circumstances, people are not that fearful. So it was quite low, but after this pandemic started, people are kind of stressed and we can see that the volatility index is quite uh, high, like higher compared to the normal situation. So, but still we can see this is a, a support level, $24. Uh, and we can expect that if, if it is as low, so it means that this is not a time to enter position. So if you have cash, on your account. It's better not to be Russian at this moment. It's better to sit and wait and watch and monitor the companies, maybe do uh, analytical research, uh, prepare several companies and identify the best prices, maybe 
20, maybe 10, maybe 15, sometimes 30% lower than current price, set the target. And when the market goes down, and I believe it will, uh, so you can buy these companies at a discount, okay? And volatility index at the moment shows us that it is a bit higher. All right, so guys, this is about indexes. Can you put plus like from zero to 10, especially for new guys who are just new, how clear it is for you? I understand maybe it's something new, you've never analyzed it, but still. All right, 10, 10, 10. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, that's how you identify the general situation in the market. And if you see that in general, everything is too pricey right now, you don't buy. It's like imagine if you go before Christmas and uh, buy something like normal stuff, which you don't buy just as a present, you just, want to go and buy some shorts and stuff like that. So you are not going to buy it at the highest price period, right? You probably wait until the discount started. So if you know that 26th of December in Australia is the best day, boxing day when everything was discount, you're not going to go and buy on the 23rd, right? And spend like thousands of dollars buying your new suit, new something else, new something. You will wait a couple of days and then buy with the discount. So exactly the same with the stock market. So at the moment is just too high. Okay. And uh, our idea is to wait. And the proof, the major proof that it is too high and the reason how we analyze it, it's uh, if you go to some, for example, uh, like this analytical journal, it's called Wall Street Journal. Uh, majority of people know. Let's compare, for example, Dow Jones. Now, now at the moment, uh, I have to explain probably for guys who are new, uh, what means PE ratio. PE ratio is abbreviation for price to earnings ratio. Uh, it means how much money you are paying for $1 of profit. So imagine the situation that you uh, own uh, we'll say a, a, a stock and this stock makes $1 in profit right now. Okay, uh, pure profit. So, and you can sell the stock for $10. So it means that another person can buy it for $10. So how many years, assuming that all the profit is paid back, paid back to you, how many years uh, you have to hold that stock in order to get your money back? It, it, like taking into consideration that you are not selling your stock. You just bought it and then you uh, recover in it. So how long does it take for you? Like 10 years, I don't know, Andre answered it or not. So if in another situation, uh, somebody is offering you $12 for exactly the same stock. So it means that if you buy that stock for $12 and the, dollar, uh, the profit is still $1, it takes you 12 years to make your money back. So this, ratio, it's exactly like 12 and 10 is a P ratio, price to earnings ratio. So how much higher people are willing to pay compared to the earnings. Now let's have a look. Right now on the 20th of July, 2020, we can see the Dow Jones industrial average, okay, 22.85 times uh, higher than its earnings. So it means for $1 of earnings in Dow Jones, uh, people are paying now $22, okay? But if we look at last year, okay, we can see that it was $18 for $1 profit. So what can you tell? Is it more expensive now or is it cheaper right now, Dow Jones? You can type it in the chat and at meantime, I'll show you NASDAQ. So here it's about 20% higher, it's more expensive. So at the moment people are more paying more for the same profit, right, for $1. So more expensive, correct David. So if we look at NASDAQ, last year it was 25, price union ratio 25, now it's 33. It's more than 30%. Even though the IT, it means uh, that IT companies, yes, they didn't suffer, but at the moment, they are more expensive than they were last year. So they increased the price, but their earnings not increased as much as their price moved up. So it's not a good idea to buy the companies when they're too, too high. And the reason why 
Nasdaq moved so high compared to uh, Dow Jones. Very simple because people think, okay, there is nothing else to invest money because they're afraid to invest in retail. Uh, you don't know when we, it's going to open. They're afraid to invest in, uh, would say, travel industry, airline industry, uh, any type of in entertainment industry, sport industry. They're afraid to do that. So, and the, the obvious thing is to put money in IT. And because everyone has put money in IT sector now, and uh, that affects, of course, the prices, the price grow up. So I believe personally that NASDAQ is overvalued quite a lot right now. So even though the company companies will perform quite well, uh, the price can recover back, like I mean, practically 30% in order to be on the same situation as last year. So if you were thinking of uh, putting money in IT sector, you have to be extremely careful when you're choosing uh, stocks and uh, choose the stocks which are not that expensive, all right? Now, and if we look at NAS, S&P 500 index, same similar situation. We can see that last AAP ratio was 23 and the performance is 29. Also 30% more expensive. Uh, as we saw uh, when I was showing charts that at the moment, the price for Standard & Poor, it's very similar, practically even in sort of higher uh, than it was last year. So it means that the earnings went down. If the price for index is exactly the same, but the PE ratio is high, it means that we are not making a dollar now, we are making only 80 cents. Okay, guys, uh, please put from zero to 10 how you understand this part of the uh, presentation, and then we'll continue to, uh, to research of the industry already.